Club soccer in Europe is back. And so is our coverage of the US men's national team players abroad. So today we're gonna go through seven players that I am looking forward to this season for multiple reasons. Now understand that there are a lot more than seven US men's national team players abroad. We're not like Canada or Mexico that has like three or four maybe, but we're only gonna go through all those players every single Monday when we do the weekend recap, which by the way, starts this upcoming Monday. So for this video, we're just gonna have to settle for seven players. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to our US Men's National Team Abroad 2024-2025 season teaser episode. Now, before we start, you may be wondering, why the heck did you pick seven players? Why not five, or 10, or 20, 15, 12? Why seven? Well, because seven is a special number, a very, very special number. Some might say the greatest number. We have seven days of the week, seven continents, seven wonders, seven seas, seven colors in the rainbow, seven eleven, seven deadly sins, seven days till you die in the ring. You get the point. Seven is the most important number in the world. And also my favorite number. And since I make the rules here, I, I picked seven and we're gonna have to go with it. Okay, so the good news is the US Men's National Team Abroad series will be back next Monday, a channel favorite, where we do a weekend recap of all the Americans abroad every single Monday. The bad news is I will be sacrificing my weekends to cover all the US Men's National Team players abroad, just so I can get called a US Men's National Team hater on X, an app that has more lunatics than the Arkham Asylum. Now, listen, I am a professional hater. I hate almost everything, almost everything. But I am definitely not a US Men's National Team hater. I was a Burhalter hater, but that ship has sailed. Now I'm gonna be very positive about the US Men's National Team as long as we get the right coach. In regards to our players, we will be covering them every single Monday with a weekend recap. Hopefully you enjoy. I know you guys love that series, so we are bringing it back. Drop a like if you're for the US Men's National Team Abroad series. Let's try to hit 1000 likes in this video and tell me, which are the seven U.S. Men's National Team players abroad that you're looking forward to the most this season? And as the Backstreet Boys would say, tell me why. So the first player that I want to talk about is Gio Reyna from Borussia Dortmund. Yes, at the time of this recording, he is still a Dortmund player. And honestly, based on the reports, it looks like he might stay with Borussia Dortmund this season. Now, understand, in the past, we've made multiple excuses or reasonable reasons to why Gio wasn't playing or not doing well for his club, right? For the national team, he's done well for the most part. Bad transfer to Nottingham Forest, didn't play much under Nuno Espirito Santo, didn't play much with Dorman under Terzic, and also, again, a lot of injuries. For this season, the 2024-2025 season, there are no more excuses. Even if he stays with Dortmund, they no longer have Terzic, they have a new coach, Sahin. And if he leaves Dortmund, he'll have another new coach. There are no more excuses. Gio has to perform. And understand that he does play well for the US men's national team, but it's time to do the same for his club. That's where he spends most of his time as a professional player. It's the only way he will reach his maximum potential. It's been long enough. We had multiple different coaches. There are no more excuses. Injuries, system, coach, none of that. I want Gio playing and playing a lot. He doesn't have to start every game, but let's say he stays with Dorman. At least start 15 to 22 games in the Bundesliga, get over 10 goal contributions, consistently come off the bench for 20, 30 minutes instead of those garbage five minutes that he would get from time to time. That's what I want to see with Gio Reyna this season, along with obviously being healthy. So he is definitely a player that I'm looking forward to this season. And if I had to pick what I think will happen, I'm not gonna say bet, I'm not betting on this. I would say I think Gio will have a very good season. Player number two is Fullerton Balogun from Monaco. Our best center forward, one of our best players, and in my opinion, the best center forward in CONCACAF. Yes, he is definitely better than Santi Jimenez that if he gets a move this summer, he'll get exposed in the top five league. 
and I think it's debatable between him and Jonathan David from Canada. But let's talk about Balogun. What I'm looking forward to this season with following Balogun is a bounce back season. Last year, Balogun had 7 goals and 6 assists in Ligue 1 while playing for Monaco. The season prior, he had 21 goals and 3 assists playing for Reims or Rons, whatever way you pronounce that team that he played before. So the point here is he was able to score over 20 goals with a worse team. Now I want to see a bounce back because Ben Yedder is gone from Monaco. Balogun also had a full season with Monaco. He needs to get at least 18 goals and a few assists this season, over 20 goal contributions. But it's not just about productivity. He needs to improve his combination playing the final third. He is dangerous in transition, he can make those runs through the channels. He's also good on one-on-one -on -one situations, but he needs to improve his holdup and combination play if he wants to be a productive and a very good lone center forward. Now, last season wasn't as bad as some tried to sell us, but it also wasn't great, and I fully expect him to do better this season. He's a player I'm looking forward to a lot. Plus, he will play in the Champions League, and I want to see how he does there. It'll be very tough competition. I haven't seen Balogun play in the Champions League before, at least in the group stage, so I'm looking forward to all of that. Over 18 goals in Liga for total over 20 goal contributions and good performances in the Champions League, along with some improvements in what I said, right? Combination play and hold the play as a lone center forward. Everything else, he excels. I guess finishing could improve, that will improve. He does tend to underperform his XG, but that's not a major issue as long as he creates a lot of goal scoring opportunities, which he did two seasons ago, but he didn't do as much in the previous season. And if he does take penalty kicks, Hopefully he does better this time around because it was pretty bad last season. It was it was bad. Player number three is a quick one, a quickie. No foreplay, straight to it. And his name is Tenor Tessman from Venezia. Yes, at the time of this recording, he is still a Venezia player. There were rumors that he was going to go to Fiorentina. That deal fell through. It didn't work because of his agents, apparently. I don't know what happened. And at the time of this recording, Tenor Tessman is still a Venezia player, which is fine. They're in the first division of Italy. Now, why am I bringing him up? Last season, he was really good in the second division of Italy, for whatever that's worth. And there was a lot of praise and a lot of hype, and that's why there were all these transfer rumors. And then the Olympics came up, and I wasn't impressed. He plays as a central midfielder or central defensive midfielder for his club, and when I saw him play for the US Men's National Team of the Olympics, he looked more like a center back. Very slow on the turn, not good in tight spaces, good range on his pass, and I guess like athletic. He looked more like a center back than a midfielder. Didn't impress me, but I want to see what this guy can do at the highest level. And that can be for Venezia or any other team. I'm not saying he's going to have a fantastic season. What I'm saying is he has my curiosity. Player number four is Malik Tillman from PSV. In last season, Malik Tillman had 9 goals and 11 assists in the Eredivisie, the Dutch league. So, 20 goal contributions. I think, for this season, what I'm looking forward to is for him to get somewhere between 25 to 30 goal contributions in the Eredivisie alone. He already played one game at the time of this recording, and he already has a goal contribution. Plus, I want to see him play well in the UEFA Champions League, and play better against better competition like Feyenoord. Ajax, you know, the top teams in the Dutch league, rather than bullying teams like Excelsior in MLS or USL. Th th this should be an American team, but instead it's a Dutch team getting bullied by Americans like Tillman, Dest before he got injured, and, and probably even by Ricardo Pepe this season. But overall, my point is I'm very optimistic about Malik Tillman this season. As long as he stays healthy, I think he'll get at least 25 goal contributions in the Eredivisie. But what I'm looking forward to is seeing how he performs against the tougher team. Something he has struggled in the past few seasons, when he played for Rangers, and then even when he played for PSV last year. So Champions League performances, I'm going to be looking to that quite a bit against the better teams. And when he plays Ajax in Feyenoord as well. And of course, if you made it this far in the video, don't forget to drop a like and, I don't know, put your predictions for how many goal contributions Tillman will get, um, Balogun, Christian Pulisic, any American that you care to comment about. Player number five is our current best player, uh, the so-called LeBron James of soccer, Captain America, Christian Pulisic from Milan. Last season, Christian Pulisic had 
26 goal contributions for Milan, and he should aim for that to a bare minimum. This season, they have a new coach, Pioli is gone, and it looks like Christian Pulisic might play a lot as a 10, with Rafael Leon on the left wing, Chukwezi on the right wing, and Morata up top. And I actually think that will be a positive system for Christian Pulisic. I think you get a lot of goal contributions with that. Hopefully, he is the penalty kick taker. That will help him stat pad. But most importantly for Christian Pulisic this season, as long as he stays healthy like he did last year, he should be fine. He should play very well, get over 25 goal contributions easily. My main thing for him are essentially two things. One is not all on him. It's win a trophy this time. I really want to see Christian Pulisic lift the trophy with Milan. The other one is he beat up a lot of the weak clubs last season. I want to see him play well in the Champions League, which he really didn't last year. Or when he plays Inter Milan, Juventus, right, in the Serie A. Those are probably the areas of improvement I would like to see for Christian Pulisic. Outside of that, he had a fantastic season last year, and all I hope is for him to keep that up and, again, win a trophy and be outstanding against the good teams and not just Venezia and Monza and, and you know, those, like, teams that are not so good in Italy. My prediction for Christian Pulisic is that he will have 32 goal contributions this season across all competitions. Is that fair? Now let's move on from Christian Pulisic and talk about player number six. And he also plays in Italy, but he doesn't play for Milan. He plays for Juventus. And no, it's not Weston McKinney because we don't even know where Weston McKinney will be this season while I'm recording this. It seems like he won't stay with Juve. Thiago Mota doesn't want Weston McKinney. So McKinney's not the player I'm gonna talk about here. It wouldn't be fair to judge his season when I don't even know where he's gonna play. And that player that I wanna talk about right now is Tim Weah, also from Juventus. And look, Weya has played well for the US men's national team quite a bit, besides this summer, right? When he tried to like punch the Panamanian player, go full boxing mode against him. But he never really had a full good club season. With Liu, he played as a right back. Sometimes he was a starter, sometimes he was a backup. He never really broke through as a winger, which is his ideal position, or maybe a second striker. The same thing with Juventus last season under Allegri. He was mostly a backup as a right wing back, and then sometimes he would start here and there, had some bright moments, helped them win the Italian Cup, right? Especially in the semifinals against Lazio. Uh, I believe it was against Lazio. But it looks like Thiago Motta, the new coach in charge of Juventus, really rates Weah and wants him to play a more offensive role. It looks like Weah will play more as a winger or maybe even a striker for Thiago Motta. So what am I trying to say here? I am hoping Weya finally has a really good season playing where he is good at, right? As a winger or maybe as a striker. Get some goal contributions. If he plays for Juventus as a winger or a striker this season, and let's say he starts half of the games, something like that, and comes off the bench here and there, he better be getting over 10 to 12 goal contributions over that, okay? When I say probably like 12 or over, if he starts for them right there, assists, goals, that's what I want to see from Weah this season. It looks like Thiago Mota does rate him, and I'm looking forward to that. I want to see what Weah can do. He better step it up, and hopefully he doesn't throw a punch here and there. And if he does it, actually throw it like you mean it, not that weak punch like he gave the Panamanian player. And understand, I'm not incentivizing violence or anything, but if you're going to punch someone, actually punch it like you mean it. Right? Not, not like the one we saw in the Copa America. But, but, but don't punch anyone. Do not do that. Don't punch anyone. There's no reason to punch anyone. Unless it's self-defense. Last but not least, we have another player that plays in Italy. Another American that plays in Italy. And his name is Yunus Musa from Milan. Christian Pulisic's teammate. New coach, new season, and Musa has yet to have a breakout year, right? We haven't really seen that. He's never had a horrible season, whether it was for Valencia or Milan. He was never terrible, but we also never really saw Musa break through. He can do his thing defensively. He can actually dribble the ball forward on his own, but the dude can't pass. He can't get an assist. He almost scores bangers, but he never scores. He really needs to improve in the final third and possibly become a locked-in starter for Milan this season. You see, Musa is not 18 anymore. He's very talented. He's one of our best players. What I want to see from him this season is take that big step forward, improve in the final third because he is 
terrible every time he reaches it. It's almost as if he's in that Space Jam movie and the Monstars just take his ability as soon as he crosses the midfield. They take all of his abilities. He can't do crap once he crosses the midfield line, but he's super talented. He almost scores bangers all the time. Almost scored a banger for the US Men's National Team this summer. Almost scored banger for Valencia, Milan. I wanna see Musa do the following this season. Be a bit productive, doesn't need to get many goal contributions, but maybe five? Is that too much to ask for for a midfielder? Become a locked-in starter for Milan and improve in the final third. If we can see that with Yunus Musa, it'll be huge. And if he improves that and Weston McKennie continues to not take care of his weight, to not figure out his club situation, McKennie could get benched by Yunus Musa, especially depending on who coaches the U.S. Men's National Team from here forward. So I'm definitely going to be tracking Yunus Musa a lot, especially because he plays for Milan, the same team as Christian Pulisic. I watched pretty much every single game they played last season, but he is a player that I'm going to be watching closely this season, and I have, I guess, high hopes for him. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like before you go. And this Monday, the U.S. Men's National Team Abroad Series will be back. A channel favorite. We're going to be covering over 30 players every single weekend. We'll be doing the weekend recap that you all love so much. So drop a like for that. And hopefully you all are excited because last season we had the best U.S. Men's National Team Abroad season in the history of modern soccer. And I expect this season to be even better. More goals, more assists, more players establishing themselves in big leagues, and hopefully more trophies. I want to thank you all very much for watching. I can't wait to start this coverage. I know it destroys my weekend, but I actually enjoy it quite a bit. And I enjoy your support too. So thank you very much for watching, everyone, and have a great day.